So today we're going to talk about e-commerce and email and how to get more e-commerce sales with email. And I'm a MailChimp expert, but MailChimp doesn't work well with e-commerce, so don't use it. Shh, don't tell them I said that because I'm going to MailChimp next week. So today you're going to learn the three plus a little subgroup types of subscribers on your email list and the one million different email formats for e-commerce and which email format to use for which type of subscriber to move them down the road to sales. Oops. Okay. So email is the alpha male. I love that one. So first we're going to talk about the subscribers. And this is an interactive presentation. Like the last half of this presentation is going to be about you working through some of this process. So please feel free to shout out your questions during the session. So the first kind of email subscriber is interested. What is that little thing on my, there you go. They have not purchased your products yet. And they want more information about your products, about how to use them, about um, how they will fulfill their needs, and what your products actually do that will help them with what they need done. Does that make sense? The second type of email subscriber is an, an engaged email subscriber. So in e-commerce, we say the engaged kind of, we have, there's a subset of engaged too, but we say the engaged email subscriber has purchased your products. And here's the real distinction. They're in your e-commerce database. The interested are in your email database. These are in your e-commerce database. That's a, a specific distinction there. So on the engagement, you get to choose the time frame that you say these people are are in the engaged group. So, and that can be dictated, it's usually dictated by your industry. So, in some industries, they're gonna have lots of purchases. Like if you're a shopping cart for groceries, like Instacart, you're gonna expect an engaged email subscriber to purchase in your shopping cart once a week. But if you're an auto repair store, your engagement might go down to, they may make, may make a purchase every once every six months, once a year, and that's still going to mean that they're engaged in purchasing. So it all depends on your products. So this is the subset of engaged. They're engaged, they've purchased in the past, but they're inactive now. So now they're not purchasing. They're opening your emails, but they're not clicking through. They're not taking that next step to make the purchase. And you get to choose the time frame depending on your products again. So um, it just depends on your products, how long you're going to give, you're going to say that it's going to take to make them inactive, they're going to be clicking through on a regular basis, but they're not going to be purchasing. So for me, a really good example of that is Michael's. I click on Michael's stupid email, that one that's like 48,000 million long, miles long. I click on that every single week. I do not purchase from the email, ever, because don't take away my Michael's experience, man. Never. So, and this is one of the most important kind is your lapsed. 
and you're lapsed, haven't opened an email, and they haven't clicked on a link, and they haven't purchased. And usually rule of thumb is, and again, depends on your product and your industry, usually rule of thumb is six to 13 months. And again, depends on your product. So I love this quote from Meg Whitman. The commu communication is at the heart of e-commerce and community. So one of the things that I see e-commerce sites doing is not communicating enough with their, with their people. Like Michaels doesn't email me back and say, hey, we saw that you clicked on those fun spring flags for your house. Why did you purchase? Or let me send you some more so you'll go purchase. So here are the basic email campaign formats. And this is the interactive part. It would be great if you see something that I've missed, because I came up with a lot of them, if you just shout it, shout it out. And I do have two slides, so if you shout it out, I may have it in the second slide. So I just told you to shout it out, and then I told you not to shout it out. So confusing. All right. So e email campaigns for any website, along with e-commerce websites, are welcome mails. Everyone should have a welcome mail. Everyone. Product promotions, email coupons, or discounts. Birthday specials. You don't have to have those, but this, I've, um, I have a couple of, of clients that are extremely successful with birthday specials. Restaurants are ex super successful with birthday specials. Newsletters. Did everybody get it written down? Transactional emails. Does everybody know what a transactional email is? Okay. Abandoned cart sequences. One of the most important e-commerce emails that there is. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. So transactional emails are the emails that you send out when people buy. When they put something in the cart and they purchase, you know, you send them that email that says, thanks for your purchase. And then the next one you send is, here's your tracking link. And then the next one you send is, your package was delivered. Here's a picture of your porch with the delivery. So those are transactional emails. They're just one. They're not sent to the whole list. They're sent to someone individually. Page triggers. Um, review requests. A lot of people won't send, don't send these, and I think that these are brilliant. And a review request is when you, you ask somebody to review the product that they just purchased. And then re-engagement campaigns. And re-engagement campaigns are where the gold, gold is, in my opinion. I love re-engagement campaigns. The page triggers. All right, so page triggers are where you do um, conversion pixels. And you may send an email where they click off to go to a page. So. You can have a page trigger that way where it's triggering from an email. They go to the page, and if they don't click on anything on that page and they get off the page, you could send them a triggered email that way. Or if they go to a page and they click something but they don't purchase, you can send them a triggered e email that way. Okay, so now we're getting to the interactive part. Wow. I thought that was going to take 20 minutes. <laughs> so who gets what? So if your subscriber is interested. Now, and notice I said subscriber, because interested people are subscribers because they haven't purchased yet. They're in your email database. So they're in your, you probably have some kind of email service provider, MailChimp, God forbid, Constant Contact, 
Active Campaign, uh, Convert Kit, something like that. So the interested are the people that are in that software. They're going to get a welcome email. It's also good to send them product promotions, especially if you can track the campaign, the page that they came into your email list from. So if you have subscription forms on specific pages on your site and you track that subscription form where they signed into your email list, then you can see, oh, they were interested in the chef's flipper turner thing. I'm not a cook. A chef's flipper turner thing. And they didn't purchase, so, but they came in, they signed in to, our, to get more information from there. So let's send them chef tools. Let's send them product updates about chef's tools. Interested? Email, uh, email coupons. That's a perfect way to, that's actually a good welcome sequence, is, hey, thanks for visiting. Get 10% off if you sign up for our email list. And then send them a email, email them a coupon from the e email list. <sighs> Birthday specials. Birthday specials work awesome. I've worked with a jewelry store who sells... Um, they sell a lot of birthstone stuff. So she has a birthday email that she sends out. And then she also has a form where you can fill out your kids' birthdays and your grandkids' birthdays. So she can send you specials when that birthstone is on sale. She's great with that. And then regular newsletters. Don't forget the newsletters. Newsletters are always good. When you cut it, what are you coming up with? Where are you in the news? Are you going to be at any events? Newsletters are always good. So here's the engaged. And remember, the distinction on the engaged is that these people are in your e-commerce database. So they have not opted into your email list. And they have to be treated completely differently. You cannot send these people a newsletter because they have not asked to be sent the newsletter. So you're sending them transactional emails. And the transactional emails, again, is the, hey, thanks for purchasing. And on that transactional email, we're going to get it to it on the next slide, but you can, actually, you can add an upsell. Hey, you bought. You bought this computer. Most people, when they get this computer, they need this power pack to go with it. And on the bottom of that thing, uh, the email, have the listing for the power pack so they can just click on it and buy. Oh, well, upsells was right underneath it. OK. Review requests. After they've gone through all the transactional emails, then the re review request comes in. It needs to be the last email that you send them. You need to send them a link to where you want them to review. You can't just expect them to psychically know where you want them to review. You want to send them a link to, if you're selling on Amazon, you want to send them a link to the Amazon review area. If you're, you know, you want them to review you on Yelp or on your website, you need to send them to that area with a specific link of where to get that review from. Abandoned cart sequences. So these can be as basic and as detailed as you want to make it. And you want to send them frequently. So you usually want to do an abandoned cart, like within an hour. You get abandoned cart? OK. So an abandoned cart email is when somebody shopping on your site, they put things into their shopping cart to purchase, but they don't complete the purchase, which I'm super guilty of because I am easily distracted and I go in 12 different directions. You know, we all have those browsers with 50 open windows. 
Not that I would ever do that, but I do. Um, and so I, abandoned cart emails are great for me. Um, and I would send them an hour, a day, and maybe even a week if your abandoned cart will last that long. Product promotions. If you have somebody who just bought sway bars for their truck on their keep your travel trailer from swaying, I'm doing that. <laughs> um, then you want to send them additional product promotions. What kind of, what is the next step that they would get to buy to keep themselves safe when they're towing their travel trailer? You know, and send them a product. When you have a new product, a new type of sway bar that may work better than your old sway bar, you may send them the new product promotion. And email coupons, and I hate telling people to send email coupons because I'm one of the people that says you should never do a coupon. You should always do a value-added offer. So I'm not, I'm not one for 10% off because you, then you devalue your product. I'm one for, okay, and you get this handy-dandy vegetable slicer also. No, I think... A value added is much better than a coupon, and you can do it either way. You can do a coupon for a value added, or you can do a coupon for a discount. So for engaged but inactive, and remember these engaged again are not on your email list, they're in your e-commerce software. So you can do page triggers if they go to a page and they don't buy, then something on that page gets triggered, and it sends them an email. Hey, why didn't you buy? Is there, are there any questions? Here's the 10 questions that we usually get about this product, and send them a little FAQs. Product promotions. Email coupons again. Yes, sir. Right. No, it should be in your e-commerce software. Remember, engaged but inactive have already purchased from you. But they're in your e-commerce software, not your email. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you just remind me of your question? I'm just super nervous. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. So he was asking about the engaged but inactive. He was saying that he was like, but they're not on the email list. How are you going to send them an email? And I said, remember, engaged, engaged has purchased from you, so you do have their email, but they're inactive. They haven't purchased for a while. And usually they're still opening you, your emails because they're engaged, but they're not purchasing necessarily. And lapsed. So lapsed are my favorite because you can recover all sorts of stuff from these people. Reengagement campaigns. Reengagement campaigns are golden. Does anybody know what a reengage needs more information about a reengagement campaign? All right. So a reengagement campaign is when you have decided what your time frame is for a lapsed person. And this goes for Everything, it doesn't necessarily have to be e-commerce. It can be on a regular um, website also. If they haven't purchased or if they haven't opened your emails for a while, you need a re-engagement campaign to see if they're interested in getting your emails and to see if you can trigger them to opening your emails. And this is how you clean your list. So those people who haven't opened in the last, depends on your time frame, but I would say like last six months, you send them an email and you make the subject line shocking. Like, hey, do you hate me? Or what's up, did I 
do something wrong, you, you make it very personal and you make it a little bit shocking. And then people will have more of a tendency to open it up. And at the top of a re-engagement campaign, you put a big, huge, red unsubscribe button. Because the object of a re-engagement campaign is to get people to unsubscribe themselves or get them back on the list and get them back active. But I love unsubscribers. Sounds weird, but I do. Because then there's not dead wood on your list. You know, your list, if the more your list is active, the more your list is um, opening and engaging with what you do, the more your list will be delivered, the more your emails will be delivered. It's that, that thing with your website where how do you get people to your website when you need traffic to get people to your website? And, but how do you get people to your website? Well, you have to build your traffic to get people to your website. It's that old circular thing. How do you get more people to open your emails? Well, you have to have people opening your emails to get more people to open your emails because you, the more people open your emails, the better deliverability you'll get. So here's the, um, the super interactive part. Let's go through and plan some people's campaigns. This is actually where I'm best at. So first off, what will your trigger be? So what are you going to say will make, will make your system send an email? What actions are your people going to take on your website to make them, to make your website send it an email? Okay, anybody got anything? I can't hear you. A purchase? Okay, that one's super easy. Then what will success look like? Oh, it's a purchase, right? So you want to plan not only the trigger, but you want to plan what you want these people to do at the end, right? What is the outcome that you want to have? What will your success look like? And this is for, honestly, every single email campaign that there is. You want to know what the success is going to be. How will you know that this email campaign is successful? I, I build everything from there because that's going to give me everything inside the email campaign. That's going to give me the content. That's going to give me the images. Sometimes that's even going to give me the trigger. But, okay. So our trigger is going to be a purchase. What will your success look like? A purchase. What will your text be? Well, your text is going to be, thank you for your purchase, right? And then what else are you going to put in there? Is that the only thing you're going to put in there? Or are you going to add a, an upsell? Add an upsell. Or... Let's go back. You might even add a review request. They were purchased, and you can add it there and send it in two weeks when they've received it and when they've used it for a while. And also, if you have a digital item, you, can, you definitely can put the review request right there. So what email format should you use? Well, the, we're saying these are our email formats. So this is, that's going to be a thank you. Look, I don't even have thank you on here. Thank you for your purchase. Oh my god, I don't even have thank you on here. <laughs> so this is an engaged. So obviously, you're going to have a thank you email that you're going to send. And I honestly may put this under a welcome email type of thing. So you're going to send them, hey, thanks for purchasing, and join my newsletter so that you can get more information about products coming up, how to use your item. 
the more you can put into those, and you don't want to go crazy and put 20 things in there, but the more you can value that you can add to that thank you mail, the more they'll leave it in their inbox. And when it's in their inbox, they may see it on a regular basis and purchase even more. So on, from a purchase, how many emails are you going to send? You are think, oh, we're just going to send it, thank you. No, we need to send tracking information so we can get in their inbox again. We need to send um, the review later on so we can get in their inbox again. The more times you can land in their inbox, the more likely you are to get a response from them. It's the numbers game there. And then what's your sen sending schedule? Well, on a purchase, that's pretty simple. They're going to purchase, and you're going to send immediately. But the shipping, when are you going to send the shipping information? Are you going to create the tracking number automatically and then ship the, send them the tracking number when it's created automatically, even though it hasn't shipped? Or are you going to wait until it's actually shipped and then give them the tracking information? There's nothing I hate more than getting tracking information before something has shipped. Because it's sitting there, and I don't know when it's going to ship. Yes. So you have to... You have to think, what, what are your customers going to want? What are they going to want to see? for the time frame, or for your sending schedule. Oh, we missed time frame. So the, and then your sending schedule, not only is it going to be your thank you, it's also going to be your shipping and then review request. And then when are you going to send a re your review request? Are you going to send it immediately? Are you going to send it in two weeks? Are you going to send it again in a month? You know, you have to distill the, all this down. What do you think your customers are going to be most open to? What are they going to be most likely to... Um, when are they going to be most likely to actually give a review? Because those reviews are golden. All right. So anybody else want to go through this process? Okay. Okay, how would you go through this campaign if you're not selling a product? Okay, so if you just have a newsletter and you're a content provider and you just want them to stay interactive with you, what would you do? First thing, I would send them a welcome email and tell them, and this should be for your e-commerce also, send them a welcome email and tell them what they can expect from your your list. Are you going to send them emails all the time? Are you going to send them infrequently? When can they expect? Are you going to send them weekly, monthly, quarterly? What kind of um, information are you going to send on your emails? Are you going to send them links to real cool articles that they can go visit? Are you going to send them blog posts? You know, are you going to RSS feed them blog posts? I mean, there's just so much that you can give them on that welcome email. And then we, we haven't even gotten into the topic of your site yet and how you can give them an insight to your site and where they can get more information from. And again, if you have subscription forms, like I always tell people, put subscription forms on each one of your blogs. And then you can use, you can track it, which blog it's coming from. And then you can send them information specifically about those blogging topics so that they can get um, deeper and deeper and deeper into the topic. Yes, sir. So is there an op optimal length or number of words or size for a follow-up email? No. And here's what I'm going to say. Every email should be short. 
Think of the time that you have to read an email. Most people do not have time to read a book. I always tell people, they don't listen, but I always tell people, one thing on your email, that's it. Send it weekly and send one thing on your email instead of sending it monthly and sending 12 things. Because people will not scroll. Statistics state, and I can give you all of my experience, the top most links are most clicked links, and as you go down and go down and go down, less and less and less and less clicks. Those connect, social connect buttons on the bottom, rarely, like maybe 0.0001% are clicked on. And I see thousands of email campaigns. Nobody clicks on those buttons. You can leave them out. One thing. One click, people are, it's, they're fractured. They're looking at them, they're in the movie theater looking, they're on the toilet reading. Give them one button, give one click that they, one action they have to take. They can't, they don't have enough time. They got a two year old running around or they have somewhere to go or somewhere to be. So yeah, one action, short, 300 words, good. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're next. Yes. <laughs> so WooCommerce, if we're talking about WooCommerce, WooCommerce does so, do some of this email. It's not pretty and it can be challenging. It's not super robust. What I like is Jilt. Jilt is excellent for e-commerce. Jilt, J-I-L-T. They were um, WordPress developers and they wanted a better solution for their e-commerce, so they built this e -mar email marketing platform for e-commerce, and it's awesome. Um, and so you probably, if you have a lot of sales, you probably want to go to something like Jilt. If you don't have a lot of sales, probably WooCommerce is fine. And I would not suggest like hooking up something like MailChimp and expecting those emails to take a lot of this burden. I would send them from your e-commerce software. And then your interested people who have actually used a subscription form on your site, that's where you send them from MailChimp. And Jilt cannot do that. Jilt only does the e-commerce side. Could be. There are tons of people around here that can tell you about membership management. I'm not, I've never done anything like that, but I think there's member monkey or something like that. I don't know. There's tons of people. I'm not, a, I'm not qualified. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so she's, she's talking about, she wants uh, tools and automations that she can plug into her site to get these types of sequences out, and Jilt. Jilt is awesome. No, it works with WooCommerce. It's a plug-in, and it's triggered by uh, WooCommerce. It takes over, if you have WooCommerce, it'll send emails from WooCommerce. It'll take over those, that emails and we'll send from there. You don't have to have WooCommerce send those emails. 
Yes, it only sends emails in conjunction with people that have already purchased. Otherwise, they're in subscribers and interested, and you have to use an ESP for that, uh, email service provider for that. I, so she's asking who to use if you don't, if you're not using your work, your e-commerce software to send out your emails. So I love MailChimp. And the reason why I love MailChimp is because they're extremely forward thinking technology wise. They were the first ones that forced responsive emails. So right after the Google started talking about anything responsive, they forced everybody to go to responsive emails like a year ahead of any other email service provider. And they are always proactive on fixing bugs. I mean, I love them, but I'm, I get my living from them, so. Nope. No, no other email service provider for any other special niches except for Jill. But no, there's no reason to. There's nothing that MailChimp cannot do, and including complex automations. There's nothing I can't make MailChimp do. OK, wait, I have another question. Yes. Yep, they're two separate worlds. Okay, so she's asking, you have an e-commerce person in your, in your email, in their, your database, you have your ESP um, email service provider, you have your email in that database. How do you make sure that you're not sending conflicting emails? I haven't found a good solution for that. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, and here's the thing is you could, you kind of know that when you first get them, if they're going into a purchase, there is a way that in MailChimp that if you have an e-commerce site, you could say, don't send to people who have purchased. There is a filter that you can use, a tag, a, it's a filter, it's a sequence that you can use. And you could do it that way, but I think it's really important if they signed up on a subscription form and they purchase, they want this information and that information. So I think it's really important to still send them that welcome sequence, a uh, nurture campaign, a drip campaign also. All right, we have 15 seconds. Yes, sir. Okay, he's asking about a CRM. MailChimp is not a CRM, and don't expect to use it as that. It sucks. Um, no. No, not at all. I have, like, zero CRM. They're always, there's always something wrong with every single one I've used. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for doing, being nice with my nervousness.